All right, so going through with nomenclature. Piping refers to any assemble of pipes, tubes, valves, and fittings that form all or part of a system that conveys fluids. Pipe refers to non-flexible uh, fluid conductors designed by a diameter and wall thickness, either strength or schedule. All right, tubing can be and usually is bent at installation. It's more flexible than pipe and is designed by uh, nominal outside diameter and wall thickness. And then fittings are devices employed to join sections of pipe, tubing or, tubing or hoses in a piping system. All right. Now we have nominal pipe sizes or NPS. It's an approximate inside diameter of a standard pipe. All right, and that's called Schedule 40. So here's our first example. We have a three inch STD pipe. All right, its outer diameter is 3.5 inches. Its inner diameter is 3.068 inches. Wall thickness is the distance in between those. All right. So if we go to schedule 80, its outer diameter is still three and a half, but its inner diameter is 2.9, all right? So we decrease the inner diameter, but we're increasing our wall thickness. So now our wall thickness is 0.3 inches. And then we go to schedule 160, and now keep in mind, <clears throat> we're still in a three inch outside diameter piece of pipe. All right, so it's outer diameter is 3.5 and it's inner diameter is now decreased to 2.6, all right? And it's almost a half an inch thick. So nominal pipe size or NPS for pipes with an outer diameter greater than 12 inches is the outer side diameter. All right. So we have a 16 inch schedule 30. It's an outer diameter of 16 inches and inner diameter 15.25. Its wall thickness is 0.375. Again, as we go up in our schedule, we are gonna be increasing our wall thick thickness. And then schedule 160, we have a wall thickness of one and a half inches. So from here to here, that's one and a half inches. So for tube sizing, in inches or sixteenths, a number 12 tube has an outside diameter of three quarters of an inch. A number 16 has an outside diameter of one inch. All right, you have wall thickness as a decimal or in the wire gauge, all right? Now we're gonna talk about copper tubing. They are different from regular tubing, all right? So it's designated by slightly different parameters, nominal size, so 0.125 inches less than the actual outside diameter. So a one inch copper tubing has an outside diameter of 1.125. And then they have wall thickness is designated by type, it's K, L, or M, with the most K being most robust. So type of pipe connections, we have butt welded. All right, that's when you need basically a V groove right here on the piece of material. 
All right, you're gonna basically see it. It'll look like this on the side view. All right, where you have, it's not gonna to be to an actual point and when they come together, what you'll see is that they'll be grooved out just a little bit and that gives a perfect amount of room to get your weld inside. All right, and that's where your weld is gonna be going. So it's gonna be penetrating there and it's also gonna be combining all of this metal. All right. Now you have this type of weld. Weld. This is a fillet weld, and basically it has instead of being two V grooves on each other, this one has basically a collar that goes around the piece of pipe. All right, and you're going to be welding onto the outside of the piece of pipe and up against that collar. So, and then we have threaded. So American National Taper Pipe Threaded or NPT is not the same as machine threads on nuts and bolts. So external threads are cut with a die. This is what a die is actually looks like. And you have these pieces or a pipe die set. And what makes them great is that these dies go into it and they're ratcheting. So it's almost like a ratchet set where you're every single time you don't have to continuously spin it around. If you only have a small section to work in, it works really, really well. Internals are cut with a, basically a tap. So you can hear anybody, they said that you go get me a, basically a tap and die set. That's what they're gonna be asking for. And then you have flanged. So flanges can be threaded, welded, or cast onto the actual pipe when the pipe is being forged. All right, so you can either thread it on, like we said, either this one is going to be welded on. Um, multiple different ways you can go about putting these flanges on. But with a flange, what you're gonna have to do is you have to bolt them together. All right. Now, when you have different types of flanges, different flanges require different gaskets. Um, the way they make seals are not due to the, the threads. It's basically, yes, those threads will make a seal, but when you're talking actual flanges to flange, you will either have a metal to metal contact or you'll have one with a gasket. And more often than not, it will be with a gasket. All right pretty much like highly specialized pieces you'll see with a, um, with a metal and metal seal. So it's almost certain you'll always see one with a gasket. All right. Now, two different ways about what these gaskets can go. All right, everyone see this section here, all the way around. This is where the, the fluid will be flowing, all right? The fluid will be in this side of this piece of the circle. 
That's where the pipe is. All right, this spot in green, come on. This spot in green That is the area where the gasket will typically be mating. All right. Sometimes that will be just slightly raised up. So if you have your gas, if you have your flange here, you'll have your gasket area this area right here is the area where it's actually going to be, I don't know why that keeps doing that. Where the gasket's gonna be mating onto it. All right. Now, another way is, is that it can be drawn like it is here, completely flat. And with that being drawn completely flat, you're gonna need a gasket that will go and be on the entirety of the flange. Obviously there's gonna be a hole where the fluid is, but the entire area is gonna be where it's gonna be sealing. All right. Now, let's quickly talk about bolting patterns with flanges. Now, yes, this says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, continuously all the way around. Uh, the main thing that you should really recognize about this is that you should be bolting in a star pattern. All right, when you bolt one down, you go across and go to another one, all right? And then you should be able to split whatever you did. So you went 180 here, and then you should go 90 from that. And then split that again to 45, and then split it again. Okay, that's what you're trying to do here. And the reason is, is that if you ever end up in a spot where you're bolting something down, you have your two flanges together. All right, these are my two sides of my flanges. If you bolt the top down, the top's gonna be like this, it's gonna be pressed together. And then you're just gonna have a leak coming out of the bottom. And the same thing goes for any other spot. And when you're bolting these things down, you don't wanna be you know, cranking down on flan, you know, bolt number one up here. And then when you go to number two, it's gonna be an inch out. Same problem's gonna happen, even if you stay with that star pattern. All right. The whole idea is, is go, you know, finger tight all around, then go and snug them up. And then if you're torquing it down to a spec, that's when you go around and you get that thing really, really tight. And you just go around one more time, all right? So you want them to go on as evenly as possible. So that gasket that's here sitting in the center can mate up as evenly as possible. So there's that gasket that we were talking about. This one is a low pressure. It can be made of rubber, paper, flexible graphite, synthetics. Um, what works really, really well is uh, old map paper, like old chart paper. If you're ever in a bind, it also works really well for um, wrapping Christmas gifts or any gifts in, in and of itself. That's what's great for chart paper. But gasket material, it's fantastic for. Um, most of the time, you'll be making it out of rubber. You'll have like a gasket making table. Um, it's not the worst job in the world. All right, so, and then like we talked about, this one is for a high pressure system, all right, where this part of the gasket is what's gonna be mating. 
Um, usually what you'll see these in is a high pressure system. All right, so on the steam system, you'll actually see it will be a metal ring like this, where here's where the fluid is. This green section here that I'm drawing in, that will be where it's gonna be mating and that's what's gonna be metal. And then on the outside of it will be almost like a, um, like a hard piece of, like almost like a cardboard material. And that will be to keep it in line. Sometimes, if you're lucky. And if you're not, then you're gonna to have to try and get that metal ring exactly here. And that's a fun time. Um, now, with these high pressure, it's basically you're gonna be using, instead of using a bolt, which is attached, I'm, you know, it has, a, it has a head on the top of it, it's forged onto it. The unfortunate see that what happens with those is this used to have a bolt head to it, that flung off, all right? But it is really difficult for nuts and threads to fail. All right, so on high pressure systems, you'll basically use a stud with two bolts, and I'm sorry, two nuts on either side of it. All right. Do we want to take a quick break at 10 before we get into two connections or just keep rolling? Quick break, please. Quick break? All right. See you guys at 10.15, okay? Cool.
All right, let's get going. So tube connections. All right, tube installations are never straight runs. All right, deliberate bends allow for reduction in length, which can occur as the tube is pressurized. All right, other things that can be happening with this is, is that, you know, obviously we are in a intro to ship systems class, ships move. That's the biggest thing is, is that anytime you have pieces like this that are such in a straight line, that's how you get cracking. You have bending the, you know, as we'll go through in these tube connectors, um, you know, they're pretty weak in those areas. That's the area where it's gonna most likely break. All right, so that's where you'll get leaks, that's where you'll get cracks, or the fitting will snap off, and if the fitting snaps off, you have a huge issue. Um, but all these instances where it's such a straight line gives no room for any bending. Um, you gotta remember, you may be putting in hot fluid compared to the air around it, you may be putting in cold fluid and it may shock the system, where either you're increasing or decreasing the length of these things very minutely, but it's still going to either, uh, it could break the piece of pipe. Huge amount of issues can come along with this, all right? So you always wanna have some sort of a bend to it, even if it looks like this should be the right way of doing it, it's not, all right? So, type of connections. These are brazed or sweated. So the brazing material, if we have our connector right here, this area, this whole orange piece is a connector. This brazing material is inside of it. And what flux is, flux is a, um, it's basically this sacrificial stuff that you use. Um, it's almost like a gelatin. You put it around fittings. Uh, you can use it when you're soldering for electricity. Uh, you pretty much use flux whenever you're trying to join two pieces of a metal together via um, some sort of a solder or in this case, we're brazing material. Um, and what it's designed to do is it's designed to heat up and boil away when applying heat to it, all right? 
So when you heat it up, it boils away. And if you were to solder this instead of doing brazing, the solder is going to be added just how this arrow is right here. All right. And so when you're adding heat and you would add heat to it over here, this is going to be boiling up. So as it's heating up and the whole fitting is heating up, your piece of solder that's going onto this piece is going to flow into this cavity because it's going to create almost like a vacuum in here. And that's how you get a really nice solder connection. All right, same thing with the brazing. The flux will do the same thing. It will draw out all of the brazing material. All right, and that's why the importance of using um, and using flux. Again, the flux is forced out. It's basically boiled off. And then the brazen material fills that void. Now, these are a flared fittings. And what you're doing is, is you're actually manipulating the piece of copper. All right, so the copper is being manipulated to be flared out and you're expanding the metal. All right, so you're taking probably a piece of pipe that was about that long and you're making it that long. So you're thinning out the material, but you're also trying to flare it out. And what you do is you put this collar on top of it, you tighten it, and your ceiling is metal to metal. So liquid tries to penetrate out of here, it's stopped by the threads, can't go out this way because it's, it's all sealed via metal. It's the pressure of these, the body and the nut going on top of each other and sealing it together. And since this is usually made of copper, it's going to be a softer material and it's going to be formed in between those two areas and create a proper seal. Now, let's talk about pipe fittings. All right. Externally threaded pipes are going to be capped off. The caps have internal threads to them. All right. But they're going to be used on externally threaded pieces of pipe. A plug has external threads on it, but it's going to be used on a piece of pipe that has internal threads. Now, connecting equally sized pipes connection, uh, connections. You could use what is called a nipple, all right? And those have either a piece of pipe in between that is not threaded, or like in this instance right here, you barely have a piece of pipe that's not threaded. All right, and it could be any size. It could be like 12 inches, it could be six inches, four inches, five inches, it really doesn't matter. It could be just one inch, all right? But the important thing to know is they have external threads but they're gonna go on to a piece of pipe that's internally threaded. A coupling has internal threads, but it's going to attach to a piece of pipe that has external threads. So a union is going to connect equally sized pipe connections. Now a union's main job is to take two pieces of pipe that cannot 
be taken apart. All right. And the problem with if you were to try and use any other thing, if you try to use a coupling here and connect these two together, what would happen is if this pipe here is connected to a wall, all right, and you screw on the coupling on this side because it's connected to the wall, you can't screw on that piece of pipe. And then you try and take on and screw on this side as well. Remember, this is a piece of pipe that cannot be removed. So this side's attached to a pump. What you would do is, is while you're tightening the pump side, the side that's attached to the wall would unthread itself. All right, so you're in a spot where you have two pieces of pipe that cannot be connected because if you try and connect one side, it's unthreading the other. So that's where union comes in. All right, it's made up of three pieces. So what you're doing is, is you have one piece that's gonna be threaded on and you have another piece that's gonna be threaded on. Now those have made a connection to both pieces of the pipe. Now you're gonna be using this collar or it's labeled over here number three. And what this collar is going to do is it's gonna join these two sections together. It's gonna to pull them together and make a seal. And that seal is gonna happen right here on this metal to metal. All right, now, that's the big point here is that it's a metal to metal seal. Yes, these threads are making a seal here. But if you were to leave this loose and it wasn't fully connected where this piece of metal here and this piece of metal here aren't connected and aren't making a proper sealant to each other, this would leak, all right? So in all actuality, this is a metal to metal seal. All right. So right here in this instance and how it looks, this would leak. All right. Even though it's a couple threads on it and all of these areas are threaded on, it would leak, a leak like crazy. But once it's pulled into place, because this coupling on top or number three is free spinning and it could pull both of these pieces together it's not going to unthread itself on either pipe all right so this is a run of pipe that can be removed without uh this can be opened without removing huge sections of the pipe all right like we talked about in the spring semester if you have like a huge amount of piping and you have to get to and remove, let's say like a, a strainer or something along those lines where you have to replace it, you would use like a coupling on it, all right? Um, I'm not coupling, a union, sorry. And that would allow you to not have to take it apart all the way at the pump and bring it all the way through all the valves that are there and then all the way finally to the actual strainer, all right? So to connect unequal sizes of pipe, we have what's known as a bushing. All right, the bushing has external threads on one side and internal threads on the other. So the smaller piece of pipe has to have external threads to go on to the internal, <clears throat> to go onto the internal threads of the bushing. All right, and the larger pipe has to have internal threads to connect to the external threads of the bushing. All right, and if you wanna go the opposite way, you basically need a bell reducer. All right. So if you have a larger pipe that has external threads and you have a smaller pipe that has external threads, then you would use a bell reducer that uses 
internal threads on both sides of it. All right. Any questions so far? Go back to that last slide. I just need to take note. Yep. And that bell would be. Yeah, guys, if I'm ever moving too fast, let me know. Let me know when you're ready. A quick question about the bushing. Okay. So it says externally threaded larger and internally threaded smaller. Mm -hmm. It's about the piping it's fitting together because the larger one's got internal threading. Or is it talking about the bushing? It's talking about the bushing itself. So the bushing itself has external threads for the, to be attached to the larger pipe. So the bushing has external threads that's going to connect to the internal threads of the larger pipe. All right. Now the smaller pipe is going to use its external threads to connect to the internal threads of the bushing. All right. See it right here. It has these external threads of this smaller pipe is going to go into these internal threads of the bushing itself. Everybody set? All right. So, quick video I found, um, and I'll post it to the video section. Of course, there's only 480p. So, What they're doing here is they're connecting as, as we talked about, this is a union, all right? And they're connecting the two pieces right now. And if you notice, both pieces of the pipe can't be moved. So they have both pieces there. So they have piece one and two being tightened down onto the pipe. All right, and you can see right here, right here, 
that's the metal and metal contact that you're going to be seeing. All right. So as he goes to <clears throat> slide, basically uh, coupling onto it. All right, he's tightening it up. Awesome. So he moves them together. And you see that not a lot of the time you're going to have that ability to move the pipe together like that. But in this instance, it's perfect. So it's just showing the fact that you need to have that perfect metal to metal contact and that collar that he's sliding over right now. That collar is what's actually creating the sealing force. It's pulling the two pipes together and putting the pressure on those two pieces of metal to seal. All right. Remember the biggest thing that we're trying to do with any of these fittings is just trying to make a conduit for fluid to go through without losing any of it. All right. And that's what a union is really about. All right. Here's a side view of one. All right. So you could see that collar that I was talking about. And you guys can see the, um, the Google image result, right? So you can see here, that's where that metal to metal contact is. This is where the collar is. And then you have the other two pieces, piece one, and then piece two, and then piece three here. All right, remember that is if you wanted to break two pieces of pipe without having to remove an entire section of it. Okay. So if you want to connect multiple pipe sections, there's different ways we can do that. We have a T because it looks like a T. All right, so you can have pipes that go into all three of these sections. This is a reducing T. So what it's allowing is almost like it's having flow going through it. And then you have like a smaller piece of pipe that's coming off of it. All right, so if you have like a one inch pipe here and you need to go down to like half inch there, all right. Then you have a side outlet T. All right, and basically what that is, it's a, a T and then right at this point here, there's an ability to connect another pipe to it. Then you have a cross and then you have a Y branch. These are very common on firefighting equipment. All right, so you have like your main fire line that comes in, all right? And then you have just the ball valve right there or a gate valve. And then it comes around and then it goes to a Y. And that Y will either have a, a ball valve on it on either side, all right? So you can connect up multiple hoses, all right? And that's what you're usually gonna see these Y branches on. Then you have a side outlet elbow. All right, same thing as the side outlet T. This elbow is just allowing a specialty scenario where, you know, yes, it's performing the same function as a T. And same with the side outlet T, it's just performing the same function as the cross. It's allowing four inlets or outlets, but the big thing here is that where you want it to go. All right. Yes, you could use a T here and then do another elbow and then everything else. And then you can have your, have your piping. But always what you want to do is you want to reduce as many of these fittings as you possibly can, because this is a point where you can leak. 
All right, these are only gonna be either threaded or soldered or welded together. All right. So if you wanna change the flow direction, you have your elbows. Elbows come in 45, 30, 90 degrees, all right? You have reducing elbows, so the elbow can start out at one inch and then go to half an inch. Um, and then a street elbow, basically what it's doing is, is that it has internal, uh, it's gonna be, it has external threads and it's gonna go to a pipe that has internal threads or it won't be threaded at all. And the diameter, the outside diameter of this piece of pipe will fit into the inside of diameter of the pipe. All right, so this street elbow will go onto the inside of a piece of pipe like that, whereas the same diameter pipe will go into this fitting, all right? That's the difference, what a street elbow will do. And then you have a U-bend. You can create those with two elbows if you wanted to. And then you have a return bend with a back outlet. So this is just the U-bend with a piece of pipe that's sticking out the back of it. All right, usually it's a reducing. Any questions on these fittings? All right. Basically for tube fittings, it's the same thing. All right, they're all called the same thing. This is still a T down here. This would still be a 90. Um, that's still a T over here. That's still a cross. Uh, you can tell that there's a couple different things going on here. You know, where these have threads, this has a, um, a flare fitting to it. These are all threads. All right, that right there is a nipple um, that's gonna be used with flared fittings on it. You can see the flaring right there. So that is pretty much it for the day today. Do you guys have any questions on everything that has to do with piping? Anybody want me to go over anything? What was, what was schedule based on? Uh, so when you say like 40 schedule. So schedule is gonna be the, the wall thickness. All right, so a higher schedule is a thicker wall. Normally what you're gonna see is either schedule 40 or schedule 80 piping. That's pretty much everything out there. When you get into specialty stuff, uh, then they have even more terminology for it, but we're not gonna get into that. All right, but just know that the, the, the higher the number for the schedule, the stronger the pipe is because it has a thicker wall to it. And second question, what did make, uh, I think it was copper, you said it was copper piping, what made that uh, different? Like, was... um, why is it designated differently? Yeah. So it's just designated by different parameters just because it's, um, just because it's copper, because you could be using copper for um, its own particular runs. It's almost like its own category, even though it's classified as tube sizing. All right. Um, you would pretty much use copper specifically for, you know, potable water and stuff like that, anything along those lines. Um, and that's why you pretty much use copper in its own category because it's you're not going to be mixing copper and then you're not going to and then go to steel and then go to aluminum all right but if you were to use you know tubing where it was like the the plastic material that's going to be classified as tubing not like copper all right good on that Can you explain the brazing and the flux? Sure.
So remember, when you're going through with it and you when you're brazing, the brazing is pretty much like you can think of as when you were to like solder a joint together. Instead of having the piece of solder in your hand, the solder material is already in the fitting. All right, so that's what you're using there. And the flux is almost like a sacrificial use case scenario. It's You're gonna use it, it's gonna go to atmosphere because it's gonna boil. And what you're doing is you're trying to create like a vacuum inside of it and it's gonna suck the brazing or it's gonna suck the, um, the solder into and in between the piece of pipe and the fitting. Which I copy. All right. So the flux is pretty much just there temporarily, just for the brazing to replace. It's almost like guiding um, the two pieces together. It, it's okay. it's it's like the highway that's showing where the cars need to go, and the cars are the um, the cars are the solder, and the highway is the the flux. Okay. All right. That is going to be the area where, like I said, it's it's there to pull in the solder it's there to spread out the brazing material all right so that way you can get the best proper seal between the two pieces all right you're trying to join them together is the uh those that makes more sense the two caps on the flux right there like the gray that's left over are those going to stay there or do those go away as well they'll just go away with time you can wipe them away the one that's on the inside of the pipe you're not going to be able to wipe away, but that will go away with flow. It's negligible. So, it's just showing. upstate RFP, it's a All right. so it's order. Um, the same thing goes with like if you were to solder two pieces of wire together, you would flux both pieces of the wire. All right. And you would combine them together. And when you're doing that, you're going to basically heat it up. You're going to see it start to boil. Once the flux starts to boil itself, you're going to add the solder and the solder is going to go towards the heat. All right. And it's going to get drawn even deeper into the joint or even deeper into those wires because now the flux is boiling away. It's becoming a gas and it's creating almost a vacuum and it's going to be sucking in that solder and it's going to make a really, really tight and it's going to make a really, really strong connection because now, you know, it's, it's a, it created that vacuum inside of it. And it's going to want something to go in there, either air, but what we want to go in there is either the solder or the brazing material. Okay. That make more sense or? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? You guys all right? Feeling yeah. good for tomorrow's quiz? Okay. I'll play yep. On that's on this, I'm assuming, yeah. Yes. Only piping for tomorrow. All only right. Um, like I said, next week we're gonna have to mess around with that exam. Yeah, I'll give you guys choices. I'm gonna think about which way to do because I didn't realize it, so I have to refix my uh my own schedule. Like I said, it's not gonna be this week. All right. Um but I will let you guys know tomorrow. All right. Other than that, if you guys have any questions, like I said, email me. I know they're going to be putting in like a 540 uh, tutor as well. If you guys got an email about that. Hey, uh, good morning. My name is Jeff Johnson. And I um, other than that, you guys are good. Service, uh, for a responsibility question. All right. So make sure you get in time on time for tomorrow at night. Um, All right. Have a good one, Professor. Have a good one. Have a good day.